Hi, it's Katrina. Number 9. The Sun May Have a Twin In a region past Neptune on the outer reaches of our solar system, there is a massive collection of ancient space debris called the Oort Cloud, which doesn't fit into scientific models of how the solar system formed. In trying to explain how this happened, a pair of scientists proposed that the Sun has a long-lost twin and that the two stars spent their early days accumulating these items from interstellar space. If the Sun does have a twin, it separated from its orbit with the Sun long ago and ended up in a totally different part of the Milky Way. The Oort cloud may be the legacy left behind by this former solar presence, which would explain why it contains more objects than it should. In simple terms, the Sun may have worked with its theoretical twin to capture the 100 billion objects that exist in the Oort cloud today. Our Sun alone wouldn't have had a strong enough gravitational pull to do this on its own, but there would have been enough pull if it were working in tandem with a star roughly the same size, according to scientific calculations. This binary orbit between the Sun and its twin may have been broken by a third star, leaving the Oort cloud behind as the only existing evidence of the twin. The theory not only makes sense, it falls in line with the fact that many solar systems orbit around two stars, suggesting that ours was no different at an earlier point in time. For now, the findings are speculative, but they are promising and worth looking into. Number 8. A Tsunami of Gravitational Waves Gravitational waves are ripples in the fabric of space-time. They are caused when large masses accelerate, for example, when extremely dense objects like black holes and neutron stars get locked into a binary orbit and ultimately merge with one another. Gravitational waves were detected for the first time in 2015. Since then, scientists have focused on improving their ability to spot them, and their work seems to be paying off. Between November 2019 and March 2020, researchers based in the US and Italy detected 35 separate gravitational wave events. That's more than a third of the 90 that have been discovered to date. Study co-author Susan Scott explained in a statement that the increased detections are revealing a lot about the life and death of stars throughout the universe. 32 of the events resulted from black holes colliding. The data shows that black holes are surprisingly diverse. For example, while one pair was 145 times the mass of the Sun, another pair was only 18 times its mass. The researchers believe that the other three events were possibly caused by the merging of black holes with less dense objects such as neutron stars, which form from the explosions of supernovas. As the technology to detect gravitational waves improves, scientists expect to pick up more mysterious events. They hope to learn more about the objects that make gravitational waves and to create new ways to test the laws of gravity. Number 7. A Shipyard of Ancient Galaxies Proto-clusters are collections of young galaxies. In the words of science writer Patrick Pester, they are like shipyards where galaxies are built. Scientists recently discovered a proto-cluster 11 billion light-years from Earth, in a part of space that's just 3 billion years old. They reported their findings on the giant structure, dubbed G237, earlier this year. An international team of researchers have confirmed its existence in a newly published follow-up study. They have identified 63 galaxies within G237, which study co-author Brenda Fry described as a star factory in overdrive. She further explained that scientists don't know much about protoclusters because they are too faint to be detected with optical light. The teams that observed G237 identified it in the far infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. In other words, they found it using a telescope that detects tiny wavelengths of radiation. Much to their surprise, G237 appears to be producing new stars extremely quickly and in huge amounts. The protocluster doesn't seem to have enough hydrogen to support the rate at which this is happening, leading researchers to suspect that it's gleaning hydrogen from threads of gas, or filaments, that link galaxies in what's known as the cosmic web. It's possible that G237 is situated along an intersection of these filaments, which would explain where it gets the steady supply of hydrogen that it needs to crank out new stars on a seemingly constant basis. Number 6. Mysterious Exploding Object Scientists detected a fast radio burst, or FRB, for the first time in 2007. 
Fast radio bursts are tiny pulses in the electromagnetic spectrum that last just a few thousandths of a second, but pack a serious punch, producing the same amount of energy that the sun does in a year. That is crazy intense. Some FRBs are singular events, while others repeatedly emit energy. One example of the latter is an object known as FRB 121102. Located in a galaxy 3 billion light years away, it was recently the focus of a study that started out as a simple data collecting mission. Scientists noticed that it exploded 1,652 times over a 60 hour period, to the tune of up to 117 times per hour. They knew from previous research that sometimes FRBs are caused by a type of dead neutron star called a magnetar. These objects have ultra-intense magnetic fields, trillions of times stronger than that of the Earth, which causes them to behave unusually. If FRB 121102 is a magnetar, like one that astronomers detected in our galaxy last year, there is reason to believe that the bursts happen on the star's surface, rather than in the gas surrounding it. Simply put, FRB 121102 released energy in such quick succession it had to come directly from its surface. While the findings can help guide further research, FRBs and the bodies that cause them remain largely a mystery. If nothing else, the study provides a good starting point for learning more about them. What do you think could be causing these ongoing explosions? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We've got lots more videos coming up. Number 5. The Moon's Surface is Full of Oxygen the lunar atmosphere is too thin to support oxygen-breathing life forms, but there's abundant oxygen inside the Moon's top layer, known as the regolith. While as much as 45% of this layer is made up of the gas, it's trapped inside rocks and dust, making it impossible for earthly creatures to breathe in its current form. Soil scientist John Grant recently discussed the prospect of extracting oxygen from the lunar materials it binds to in order to make the moon's atmosphere habitable. He said that it could possibly be accomplished through something called electrolysis, but this would use up immense energy, requiring industrial equipment and energy sources that are capable of supporting the process. The first step would involve converting solid metal oxide into liquid form. A Belgian-based company plans to send three experimental reactors to the moon by 2025 to see if it's possible. If it is, then it will bring scientists one step closer to generating the type of oxygen we need to survive. Experts believe that a cubic meter of the lunar surface could generate enough oxygen for a human to live off of for two years. But theorizing and doing are two very different things, and whether or not their predictions will pan out remains to be seen. Still, it's a pretty amazing concept, literally mining oxygen to make the moon habitable for humans. Number 4. Black Holes Might Be Growing Scientists realized in recent years that black holes are much bigger than they expected them to be, but until recently they had no idea why. They now believe that this may be directly related to the fact that the universe is constantly expanding. According to a new theory known as cosmological coupling, all objects with mass are growing as the universe grows in the aftermath of the Big Bang. It's only natural, then, that black holes are also expanding, since they are some of the most massive objects that are known to exist. The theory was developed after scientists started observing black hole mergers, which is when two black holes get locked into orbit with one another and eventually collide. Researchers began tracking these events in 2015 using interferometers, which detect the gravitational ripples that occur when black holes smash into each other. They noticed that the waves didn't quite make sense, though. Based on previous calculations, black holes should be less than 40 times the mass of our Sun. But the ripples showed that some black holes are more than 50 solar masses, with some measuring nearly 100 solar masses. One possible explanation suggests that black holes grow by consuming gas, dust, stars, and other black holes but this fails to explain how they expand in parts of the universe that lack these materials to feast on. Other proposals run too contrary to scientists' understanding of the universe to seem realistic, except perhaps the idea that the growth of black holes has something to do with the universe expanding. Using a theoretical model, researchers calculated that black holes may expand at a rate that coincides nicely with the growing universe. 
Cosmological coupling sounds crazy on the surface, but it's proven to be valid when it comes to other objects in the universe, so it's entirely possible that it applies to black holes as well. Number 3. Searching for life on Alpha Centauri The closest star to our solar system, other than the Sun of course, is called Alpha Centauri. It's actually a triple star system, and it's located just 4.35 light years away from us. Scientists recently announced plans to search for habitable planets within Alpha Centauri as part of a space telescope mission called Toleman. Equipped with a unique lens, the telescope will enable researchers to detect irregularities in the movement of stars that indicate that there is a planet with gravity nearby. NASA engineer Eduardo Bendek explained in a statement that even nearby planets are difficult for experts to find. The Toleman telescope is extremely sensitive and will make the discovery process easier by detecting even the slightest gravitational movement. Two of the three stars that make up Alpha Centauri are similar to our Sun. The third is a red dwarf, and there are two exoplanets orbiting around it that appear to be somewhat similar to Earth. Now, this doesn't automatically mean that they have an atmosphere that we could survive in. Scientists haven't investigated the exoplanets in enough detail to make any conclusive statements about whether they do or if they could support oxygen-breathing life forms. The Toleman mission will try to answer that question by focusing primarily on what's known as the habitable zone around Alpha Centauri's three stars. This is an area where liquid water could possibly exist. Speaking with Space.com, Professor Peter Tuthill, who leads the mission's development, stressed the importance of getting to know our planetary neighbors. The team hopes to start doing just that by around 2025. Number 2. Wormholes could be shortcuts through space-time. Have you ever fantasized about time travel? Many people do, though most of us have never thought that the crazy concepts in time travel stories could really be possible. You might be surprised to learn that scientists began speculating about time travel as far back as 1928, when mathematician and theoretical physicist Hermann Weyl proposed the idea of something that eventually became known as a wormhole. In simple terms, a wormhole is a structure that connects two very distant points in space-time, acting as a sort of shortcut between black holes that it would normally take an extremely long time to travel to and from. Experts don't know if wormholes actually exist, but they think it's possible. One major problem with the theory is that until recently, it seemed as though wormholes would instantly collapse, based on the laws of mathematics that are used to explain them. These laws, known as general relativity, are based on Albert Einstein's understanding of how gravity affects the fabric of space-time. They are fixed rules, but they allow for some freedom when it comes to using different metrics to describe a situation, and this can lead to different theoretical outcomes. Based on the metrics that scientists used in the past, wormholes are inherently unstable, but a new study plugged different metrics into the equation and found that wormholes might be stable after all. According to the research, a particle can hypothetically enter an event horizon, the area around a black hole that essentially marks the point of no return, and escape from the other side. The findings are fascinating, but theoretical. The study only considers the role of gravity, and there are still numerous factors that indicate that if wormholes are real, they are unstable. In short, experts have a long way to go in order to truly understand whether wormholes are stable or if they even exist in the first place. Number 1. What is Oumuamua? Our understanding of space is constantly changing. There is a lot scientists don't know, and sometimes discoveries have more to do with ruling certain things out than determining exactly what something is or how it works. Take for example Oumuamua, a huge object that was observed exiting our solar system in 2017 at 57,000 miles per hour far too fast to have originated here. It was accelerating at a pace that gravity can't explain, and there were no signs of it containing any vapors or gases that might be propelling it. Scientists are having trouble figuring out exactly what this interstellar object is. A recent theory suggests that Oumuamua is a nitrogen iceberg, a chunk that broke off of a Pluto-like planet outside of our solar system. The presence of nitrogen would explain what's thrusting Oumuamua through space at such a high rate of speed. It also makes sense because nitrogen is present on Pluto and it's invisible to telescopes. Just as quickly as it was proposed, however, the nitrogen iceberg idea was shot down by astrophysicists at Harvard, 
who recently published a paper explaining why it's simply not possible. The team argued that the universe doesn't contain enough nitrogen to make an object as big as Oumuamua, which measures somewhere between 1300 and 2600 feet long. Moreover, pure nitrogen is rare and has only been detected on Pluto in extremely small amounts, according to the study's co-author Amir Siraj. But the authors of the nitrogen iceberg theory are standing by their findings. Astrophysicists Alan Jackson and Stephen Desch defended their research, claiming that the new study uses a lot of approximations and estimates, which conveniently fit the argument against their theory. As things currently stand, only one thing is clear when it comes to Oumuamua. The mystery of what it actually is remains unsolved. Thanks for watching! What was your favorite space discovery? Do you want to learn more? Let me know in the comments below and remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye.